get your pens and papers out, get your asses out of bed. Who the hell am I and where did you land? You, my friend, landed in paradise. I'm Dr. Shereen Idris, a board-certified dermatologist, and we do a Pillow Talk Derm every Saturday morning, covering topics from many different aspects of beauty, cosmetics, skincare, ingredient story, and even health. So get ready because today we are gonna unveil the truth behind vitamin D and specifically sunscreen. If you have not subscribed to this channel, do what's good for you and subscribe below, like this video, and let me know what you wanna learn about next. Without further ado, let's talk vitamin D because this has been the focus of attention for sunscreen haters for quite a while now on social. And it's about time that their egos get busted. So we are going to poke at this situation, poke at this myth, and really debunk it once and for all. According to the National Health Nutrition Examination Survey, 42% of adults in the U.S. are vitamin D deficient. And according to the WHO, 1 billion people around the world are vitamin D deficient. Why does it matter? Why should I care? And honestly, what is vitamin D? Vitamin D without stating the obvious, is a vitamin. It is a vitamin that is a unique vitamin because it is made by our bodies. Yes, you heard me right. We can make vitamin D. How? When we are exposed to UV radiation. And that's why it gets a lot of hate. We'll hit on that in a second. It is also a unique vitamin because it is fat soluble, meaning that your BMI is a little bit higher and you have more fat in your body. Your body is going to store that vitamin D but you might think to yourself, if I'm storing it, isn't that a good thing? It's not a good thing because the fat is greedy and it doesn't allow it to be released into your body for your body to use it adequately. There are two main forms of vitamin D. There is vitamin D2, also known as ergocalciferol, and this is usually found from fungi and yeast. And there's vitamin D3, also known as cholecalciferol, which is produced when the sun is exposed to UV radiation. And both undergo a series of transformation in our liver and our kidneys to become the biologically active form of vitamin D. The reason why vitamin D is important for you is because it plays a crucial role within your health. It allows your body to absorb calcium better. So if you are somebody who's taking calcium supplements, you probably wanna check your vitamin D levels as well or take a vitamin D supplement as well if you should because it can help you absorb calcium better, allowing your immune system to function more adequately and making sure that your bone health is stronger and better over time. In recent years, research has suggested that low levels of vitamin D are actually correlated to poor mental health, so there is even a correlation with your mental health. So, the myth usually goes like this. Sunscreen blocks UV radiation, specifically UVB. This causes vitamin D deficiency because without UVB, our bodies can't make vitamin D. In theory, they are correct but in reality, they are wrong. And this myth has been debunked since at least 1987. In 1987, there was a study done by Matsuika and a bunch of other really smart people called the effect of broad spectrum sunblock on cutaneous synthesis of vitamin D3. And they said that properly applied, and properly is the keyword, properly is the keyword because most people do not apply the right amount, yours truly included, in terms of amount and in terms of reuse. So properly applied high SPF might reduce vitamin D synthesis, but clinically, clinically, the amount is never applied and the repetition is never done and therefore sufficient amounts of vitamin D are always produced. And the reality is, even though sunscreens block UV radiation and UVB specifically, UV rays can still permeate through your sunscreen. In fact, an SPF 30 only blocks 97%. So 3% of UVB is still going through. An SPF of 50 blocks 98%. So 2% is still going through. And this has been backed up by other studies. There's one in 2013 called Sunscreen Prevention of Skin Aging, a randomized trial, where they said that regular SPF users still make enough vitamin D. And in 2019, there was a whole literary review by um, Neil and a bunch of other people called Sunscreen Use and Vitamin D, a literary review. And they basically concluded that in general, sunscreen does not lead to vitamin D deficiency. So a bunch of various studies have already debunked this myth, even though people still perpetuate it. 
And the reality is there's even been some observational studies where people have noticed that those who apply sunscreen very regularly have counterintuitively higher levels of vitamin D. Why? Because if they're applying sunscreen regularly, they're more comfortable being out in the sun and they're still getting UV radiation exposure while out in the sun. So their vitamin D levels are fine and normal. Plus people who apply sunscreen regularly tend to be overall more health conscious. So they're probably doing other things to make sure that their vitamin D levels are normal. We will hit on that in a second. What then causes vitamin D deficiency if not sunscreen? Starting with number one, limited sun exposure. If you live in a part of the planet that is either really north or really south, where there is less light overall during the day, chances are you probably are going to be vitamin D deficient because you don't have as much sun exposure throughout the day. That is a fact because the primary source of vitamin D is light. Number two, dark skin pigmentation. Yes, you heard me right, dark skin pigmentation because highly melanated people have more natural protection against UV radiation. And this is just a natural thing. Once the sunlight hits your skin, a chemical reaction occurs, making your cholesterol convert into pre-vitamin D, which is then converted into the active form of vitamin D by your liver and your kidneys. When you are more melanated, people with darker skin tones in general have less UVB penetrating their skin and therefore less production of vitamin D overall. As we get older, as we get wiser, our vitamin D production goes down. We are not as good at making it in our skin. Number four is obesity. Remember what I said, vitamin D is fat soluble. It resides in our fat, which you might think, if I am bigger, if I have a higher BMI, if I have a higher ratio of fat in my body, don't I have more vitamin D? Yeah, but no, because fat is greedy and your fat cells are gonna hold on to that vitamin D, not releasing it into your body, allowing your body to use it adequately, which is interesting with the US data, which is 42% of the US population is vitamin D deficient. Dietary insufficiency, you're not getting enough vitamin D through your diet and eating vitamin D rich foods. Five is malabsorption disorders. You're not able to absorb through your diet adequately and therefore you cannot make vitamin D. There's also kidney dysfunction, liver dysfunction, and certain medications like anticonvulsants, steroids, and certain weight loss medications. How does this show up in your body and what does vitamin D deficiency look like? The reality is the signs and the symptoms are very, very subtle and only fully appear when you are really deficient. And the most common thing that first happens is intense back and bone pain. Because we don't have the vitamin D to have enough calcium absorption, our bones get affected. Our bones become weaker and our muscles tend to spasm. And this is first noticed in our back. We can also have severe fatigue and being tired, which can also lead to severe depression, changes in your mental state and mental status. Vitamin D is also needed for your immunity. So you might notice an increased rate of bacterial infections or getting sick with certain type of infections. It can also increase the risk of autoimmune disorders appearing because your immune system is now down. It can affect your heart, it can affect your cardiovascular system, it can affect your mental state, and it can even affect your hair and hair loss. If you're somebody who's noticing a lot of hair loss recently, it is also worth getting your vitamin D levels checked. Which now leads me to what can you do to help yourself to make sure that your vitamin D levels are always good? Obviously monitor your levels, but if you're trying to make sure that you're having a holistic approach to this, first and foremost, and you're gonna hear it from me, I'm a board certified dermatologist, but increase your sun exposure, but do it smart. Before the hours of 10 a.m. and after the hours of 4 p.m. generally are safe, but it depends on where you are on this planet, on your skin tone and of the time of year. If you're living on the equator or if it's summertime in the Northern hemisphere or in the Southern hemisphere, you might wanna go even earlier than 10 a.m. and even later than 4 p.m. and really make sure that you're limiting it to 10 to 30 minutes twice a week at most. That's all you need. Number two, vitamin D supplements. Vitamin D supplements can make a huge difference in your vitamin D levels overall. You can either get them as vitamin D2 or vitamin D3. I recommend vitamin D3 because it's more effective to restore your vitamin D levels. If you're healthy, you are on average getting anywhere from 600 to 800 international units of vitamin D a day. The higher limit of safe in terms of supplements is approximately 4,000 to 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day. 
Be careful not to overdo it because if you overdo it, you can get vitamin D toxicity, which can now absorb way too much calcium, which can really F up your kidneys, causing you a lot of problems. You'll probably first notice it in the form of severe nausea, vomiting all the time, and you're urinating like crazy. So just be careful not to go to an extreme and obviously consult with your doctor because everybody here is different. I'm going to show you guys a few examples. Nature's Bounty has a vitamin D3 at 5,000 IU use as you can see over here the international units are written but that's equal to 125 micrograms i take this maybe honestly like once a week or twice a week at most however recently i have not been taking it because i take nutrafol every single day nutrafol interestingly is for hair and it has vitamin d3 at 2500 i use per day if you take the right amount and occasionally if i'm not taking nutrafol this is sort of like my before going to bed treat, believe it or not, but a prenatal gummy also has vitamin D3 at a thousand IUs per serving. So you can get it in various different supplements. In terms of diet, you wanna make sure that you're eating fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, trout, or tuna because these fish get vitamin D3 from their diet and they actually store them so they become really rich sources for human consumption. Um, you can also take cod liver, you can eat beef liver, Egg yolks are a very, very rich source of vitamin D, not egg whites, egg yolks. The yolk, the orange or the yellow part of an egg is high in sort resource for vitamin D. Fortified foods, interestingly, in regions where there's not a lot of sunlight, some foods are fortified with vitamin D like milk, orange juice, breakfast cereal, and certain dairy products, and even mushrooms. Not all mushrooms, but like shiitake and maitake mushrooms can actually make vitamin D and are a really good plant-based source of vitamin D. UV lamps and bulbs are also a good source only under the supervision of a physician. This does not mean that tanning beds are a good source of vitamin D. Do not misunderstand me. Oftentimes people with seasonal affective disorder do have sort of treatments with a UV lamp, but I would not recommend doing this on your own, not under the supervision of a doctor. You can buy yourself a lot of problems, health-wise, in the form of skin cancer. Lifestyle changes can also make a huge impact on your vitamin D levels, physical activity, and being more active. And obviously, always address the underlying issue because if you have a malabsorption disorder and if you're not able to actually absorb vitamin D adequately, you're gonna be like a sinking ship where you're trying to get water off of one side without patching the hole on the other side, and you're gonna lead to nowhere. So with that, I hope this video helped clarify a few myths. I hope you have a better understanding of vitamin D, and I hope that now you are no longer scared of what vitamin D can do for you, and you're not scared of sunscreen blocking that for you. So have beautiful skin, save your money maker, live a beautiful life, and get your vitamin D. I'll see you guys next weekend.